Hello and welcome back to Let's Play Sentinels of the Multiverse the Video Game, Rook City Edition. In the last episode we beat Spite on Challenge Mode, and in this episode we're going to beat the Chairman. His challenge condition is Chemical Immortality. At the start of the villain turn, the Chairman regains X HP that is the same on both sides. I'm unfortunately coming to you in post here. The original commentary for this video got eaten. Not entirely sure how, it's just one of those things that happens. Normally, I would re-record the episode, however, I've been having some trouble with the chairman, and this was a pretty good game, and I didn't want to just throw it away. So here we are in post-commentary. My team is Legacy, Haka, Ra, and Mr. Fixer. I chose heroes that have a large amount of HP, because we're going to need it. And Mr. Fixer, I decided I would use the intended way, just go with the martial arts master theme, and use whatever I get when I get it. I also decided to play on Dinosaur Island because the chairman is difficult, and I really didn't want to play him in one of the harder Rook City environments. Not that this environment is free, it will still do some things to mess us up. I'm not going to commentate over the entire game. I think what I'm going to do is just give you pretty much the most important information about what happened, my strategies, and what makes challenge mode different. Challenge mode is really not that different from normal mode, honestly. He's back to needing three underbosses in his trash to flip, and he regains HP, so that means he has a little bit more than his regular 35 HP. The operative does that as well, same thing. But mechanically, it's really not that different. You just have to last longer, hence the big HP team. The main thing that I'm going to explain, well, the main two things that I'm going to explain for strategy is Haka started out with a Savage Mana, which is good because I didn't bring any card draw into this battle. It was kind of, let's see what happened kind of thing. So luckily we started with it in hand. The idea is to eat mostly the thugs with Haka because we want the underbosses to go into the trash. And even if we get a prison break, if the underbosses don't have their thugs, they are considerably less scary. Unfortunately, he started out with the deputy, which is one of the ones that we really dislike. The fence is another one that we really, really, really don't like. I think I got rid of him first because we didn't want our ongoings and our equipments to get completely wiped out. It's pretty good to have him play the fence turn one, because that means the thief comes out and has nothing to steal, because there's nothing on the board. Mr. Fixer started with a jack handle in play, or in his hand, excuse me. Jack handle allows him to do any damage that he does to all targets. It does not combo like, like um, the dual crowbars do. So with the dual crowbars, he does the damage once, and then does that same damage again, getting boosted by any boosts a second time. That's not true with Jack Handle. It's just a straight AoE, do this same damage to everything. Pros and cons for different situations. It ends up working out kind of well here. It's not exactly what I wanted, but it's what I got, so that's what we did. I ended up having to make the decision whether I wanted to save underbosses and thugs at a low HP so that Haka could take them with Savage Mana, or if I wanted to let Mr. Fixer end up killing all of the stuff. Because Jack Handle is a must and not a may, you don't get to target your attack. You have to kill, or you have to attack everything. If you've got a lot of thugs and underbosses on the board that are at low HP, you have to make the decision if you want to do the damage or let them sit and let Haka take them. I ended up deciding most of the time to let Fixer do the damage. That was for a few reasons that you'll see. One should be coming up fairly soon, but in the end, I let Fixer be the star of this show. Because the chairman is immune to environment damage but also has higher HP than most of us, he was a good target to eat up all of the damage from the T-Rex that did eventually come out. And the Velociraptors helped us, sort of. The Velociraptors took out some of the lower HP thugs. The unfortunate part about that is it meant Haka couldn't do it. But we, you know, it was good to just have them gone <laughs> and off the board and not worry about it. I might not stick around and commentate for that much longer. I want to talk about the next turn, and after that I think I might just let the game play out. 
There's not all that much that I have to say about the chairman that's new. We've basically seen this fight before. The only thing that's different is that on his other side, once we start dealing him damage, he and the operative are going to be regaining a little HP. But we're going to be dealing the damage faster than that's going to matter. Again, I'm sorry I have to do this post-commentary. I don't like having to do this. But with a fight like the chairman, which by the way, this was my second attempt, the first time I tried to fight him, he got a very poorly timed jailbreak, got all of his really scary stuff out all at the same time, and we just crumbled. I didn't feel the need to show it, it wasn't a particularly interesting game, we lost within three rounds, which I suppose on its own is interesting to hear about, but it wasn't anything worth showing. But that's why I didn't want to have to play this fight again. There goes Mr. Fixer using Jack Handle to do his AoE damage to everything. He really can be a powerful anything you need him to be. He's got a little bit of AoE, he's got a little bit of big damage to single targets, he's got a little bit of damage resistance, or damage reduction. Just kind of depends on what his cards are feeling like giving you at the time. The Velociraptors did help us there. They took out... I can't... It was either a Crooked Cop or a Deputy. I wasn't looking. But they took out something important. Oh... They took out an underboss, that's what it was, so that meant that he flipped on that turn, which is good, because he just got all of his underbosses back out from the trash. However, it's not the worst situation. There's not a ton of stuff out that's going to be dealing us that much damage, and we had enough cards that we could pretty much deal, it, deal with it without total chaos happening. That ground pound that Haka drew was a big way that I, I felt like I was going to deal with this. Unfortunately, the raptors did take a little bit of a bite out of us, and we don't... I, I can't remember if we ever got to see this during the base game, but if you let two raptors stay out at the same time, they do more damage. I didn't want the enforcers to deal us damage because they're... the enforcers deal a lot of damage. They're really meant to be a nuisance. They want you to have to discard cards, and at the time, I had the cards to discard. I almost never like to let the damage for them go through. So here, I'm gonna play the Ground Pound, and that led me to making a decision with Fixer to use Jack Handle to destroy as many thugs as I possibly could, despite the fact that that meant that Haka wasn't going to be able to take them. I did that because now that we're immune to their damage, I just wanted to clear the board and, you know, not take that damage. Because there's a lot of stuff out here. As nice as it would have been to let Haka eat, particularly the Deputy or the Crooked Cop, I decided that because of how many things were out, I would take advantage of us not taking damage and let Fixer clear as much as he could. And that was a decision I ended up making a couple more times throughout the game. Now that I've explained that, the only other really notable thing that happens is eventually, towards the very end, Fixer does change from the jack handle to the dual crowbars, mostly because at that point we're about to kill the chairman and... Well, spoiler alert, I win this game. If, if I didn't win, it wouldn't be posted, so I suppose that's not much of a spoiler. But I wanted to get the bigger amount of damage, and his thugs and his underbosses were pretty well dealt with at that point, so that's why I made that change. And, well, the rest is a pretty standard game against the chairman. I did pretty well for myself. He did pretty well for himself at some points, but we came out on top in the end. So I think I'm going to leave you here and just let you finish the rest of the game. The next fight that we're going to have is against the Matriarch, which I really hope I'm not going to lose the commentary for that. Obviously, I never plan to. But, well, I'm not even going to do an outro. Thanks for watching. If you're still watching, thanks for watching to the end. If you're not, well, thanks for watching this far. And hopefully I'll see you in the next episode for the Matriarch. Have fun watching the rest.